afternoon. It is 12 noon and we are going to begin and call to order our workshop meeting of the Board of Regents of the Del Mar College District meeting in the Eisensee boardroom. We do have a quorum and so let's begin please with a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, Susan, would you mind leading us in the pledge? <laughs> <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Would you please join me in our tradition of reading together the mission statement of Del Mar College. Del Mar College provides access to quality education, workforce preparation, and lifelong learning for student and community success. And as a reminder, Del Mar College is streaming the live audio and video from the official Board of Regents meetings on the college's website in real time, with the exception of portions of the meeting considered as closed session by statute. And actually, I want to begin because I think uh, Dr. Escamilla has an introduction he'd like to make. I do. Thank you, Chairman McCampbell. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome our new, our incoming Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Raul Garcia. He is joining us back over here. Uh, Mr. Garcia drove in from Illinois last night from Chicagoland. <laughs> And uh, came a couple of days early. He got here this morning, and I said, oh, this isn't August 1st. You're early by two days. That's not true. Uh, he came very purposefully to hang out with us and to, to be here specifically for this meeting and to uh, begin absorbing all the numbers of the college and, and, the, and the culture and all the things. He says that uh, notably that uh, the heat with the heat that he's, uh, that he's, that he's uh, defrosting quickly from um, <laughs> the northern region of the, of, of the country. But with that said, I'd like for everybody just to join me in a round of applause and welcome Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia, welcome. And uh, you may realize you're probably the only, oh, next to the only person in the room wearing a tie. So we do have summer casual here. You're always welcome, uh, at least in the summer, to, to uh, Take off that tie, and I assume one of the first orders of business may be to get you a logo shirt so you can wear the brand proudly. But again, welcome. We're glad you're here. Our uh, item number one on our agenda is discussion of the proposed maintenance and operations budget uh, and debt service budget for the fiscal year 2018-19. And Lenora Keys is going to lead us in that action item. Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> in front of you, uh, you have uh, two packets that we're providing today. One is with a yellow highlight, and that is the original budget that was posted as of last Thursday morning or, and, and is, was on the Internet up until recently. Uh, you have another version which is, says revised on the front of it. And this is what we're going to uh, go through today more, in more detail. But I wanted you to have both copies as we work through both. The timing as we receive our information from the uh, tax appraisal office is very tight always. And we work very hard. Uh, John Johnson and Kathy West have all worked and the staff works very hard to make sure that what we provide is the most current and up-to-date information copies. possible as we know our taxing information. That includes tax valuations and then as we look at tax rates. Uh, you'll see a difference in both of these proposals, uh, and we'll go through each item as we go through that. Dr. Esme, are you trying to you look like he was? Okay. Um, what we've done is I will show and I'll go through in, in detail the version that we're going to go through and compare uh, to the one that was presented in June is this is going to also include a slight in maintenance and operations tax rate increase. And that rate increase will generate approximately $1 million in revenues. And we're going to show exactly where those dollars would go and the justification for it as we go through this. Also, since last week, we've received the tax valuations, which is good news, which has gone up too. So all that information is in this revised version. And if you have questions regarding what was the original, I've tried to flag everything that I could compare back to so that uh, everything flows and any questions 
please let me know. And again, this is workshop mode, and we're here uh, to work through this together. And so uh, everyone understand. And also attached, I'd like to say, is that besides the PowerPoint, we've attached the copy in the same budget format that you receive on a quarterly and monthly <coughs> basis. And so this is, uh, is more of an attachment. However, the same information is what's in the PowerPoint in different format. So that's what's in front of everyone. And anyone that is on uh, outside of the uh, college today, the link has been revised. It's on the website. If someone is listening and wants to go click on that link, they're welcome to do that. Also, if, if on your uh, iPad, there should be a red button that comes up and it says revised. If you've not refreshed that, I would ask that you do that too and you'll get this most recent version. Okay? And so that we're all looking at the same information at the same time. I appreciate your indulgence with this and we'll work through it. Okay. Our agenda today, I pretty much went through it and it's uh, basically the same as it has been as we've looked at the budget over the last uh, few months. We will look at the timeline in our, our calendaring, also our strategic initiatives and tie them back to where we're uh, allocating our funds and our types of re different revenue as from the state, tuition and fees and things like that. Also, our proposed expenditures and particularly in how they affect salaries and non-salary adjustments. We're going to review those maintenance and operations tax rates and the debt rates and then ask for recommendations. Okay. This was the timeline that we've looked at uh, and I do like to point out that we began as a college looking very diligently at the calendar, I mean at the budget in January of this year. We came to you in February and made a presentation where we had uh, really looked at expenses very carefully to make sure that we were ending the year where we needed to be uh, as, a re as a, we were impacted by Hurricane Harvey. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked about that pretty much through the entire spring semester and that effect that it's had on our budget and how we've maintained and, and managed those funds. Uh, we've had presentations here at the board in February and again in April and June. And here we are in uh, the last day, almost last day of July for our workshop. And then a very <coughs> lengthy uh, calendar for August. I know with several dates, it's on your board agenda, board calendaring dates for those that show up in August. The assumption page is also always very important as to how we build a budget. And I'd like to point out on this slide and on your page, where there is a slight difference in what you received originally and what we talked about in June. Um, we are still projecting enrollment at a, at a flat rate compared to this last year. However, we do provide the figures that if we, for every percent of increase and in general total enrollment, we would have over $205,000 in revenue. So we always keep that in mind, particularly as we look at our contingency lines and, and making sure that we have sufficient funds built in and hopefully that number will tick back up. Yes, sir. Lenora, a question, and I had this even in the old package. When you say the target is zero to two percent, yes. it looked like you actually used zero. You're just saying you don't expect it to go beyond two percent. What number did you actually use? Zero, one percent, two percent? In we're using we're using zero our zero. flat flat enrollment right. for t as compared to 2017-18 budget. And what you're saying is that it's unlikely it would go beyond two percent, and so for that every one percent it moves, it's going to be two hundred and five thousand. Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Thank you. We hope it'll go up more, and particularly once we get further in, I'm going to share some information on continuing education and corporate services that has just come in in the last really week, and I'm going to tie that in a little bit later. Uh, on tuition and fees, I'd like to remind everybody that we did increase tuition and fee tuition by $3 per semester credit hours, and that is in effect. One of the big changes, too, we, affect, uh, do we expect to impact uh, in a very positive manner, and we're already seeing that in our dual credit enrollment and continuing education with the law that was changed, this being our base year. Our base year began this summer, <coughs> and the calculation for uh, next budget year will begin this summer through fall through next spring. And so our enrollments are very important to us this coming year. Um, also, we have enhanced Pell opportunity. And then our tuition <coughs> fee discount rate has gone up. 
And this budget includes an 18.5 percent uh, uh, waivers and exemptions discount rate. And that's really trending more accurately than in past predictions. But that number is the same as you saw in June. Now where you see a difference is under tax assumptions. Uh, we received from the tax appraisal office last week that we're projecting, and they're very so solid with it, with a growth rate of 4.4 percent in valuations, per, uh, property valuations. In the presentation that you had in June, we used a 3% growth rate. And so that is a difference that you will see. Also, you will see a difference in the maintenance and operation tax rate. What we're presenting in this presentation is 0 0.209693 per 100 value tax rate for maintenance and operation. Now that is different from the June presentation where we used 0 0.205700. So that is 4.4 4 cents difference. Okay, you will see how that trickles throughout the entire budget line item as we go forward. But that, this is the basis on which we have built the budget that you're fixing, that we're fixing to walk through. And on, and on that, Lenore, when you said that's they're, they're giving you that number is pretty solid, it still technically could change from the appraisal district. Correct. But the other collections could change. They're so, so when they say the solid behind it, it means they don't. They, you don't anticipate any change in what the appraisal district gives you, subject to collections. This is what they've given us as a solid number so by legislative sure. date. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, our next slide is focusing on our strategic initiatives that are throughout the budget. What we've been able to do is this, the strategic initiatives have not changed. But as we looked at the dollars and as we worked with it as your administration and management team, we looked for ways to reinforce the funding in these key areas. And you'll see that in the budget. First of all, the, uh, the police department is, does receive line mm -hmm. item additional funding, um, and that is the same as, uh, as in June. Uh, however, mm -hmm. on salaries for uh, everyone for uh, faculty staff administration all the way across the board all salaries we're going to recommend an increase and I'll go into great detail into that and that truly is to support our goal three which has to do with maintaining and recruiting our, our faculty and staff and everyone here all employees here at the college uh, our personnel needs due to enrollment growth what we're seeing is even though we're projecting a, a flat enrollment compared to last year in some programs, we're seeing significant enrollment. We're seeing enrollment three and four times what it was, say, two years ago. And in some areas, it may be slightly down or fluctuating. And so we want to always make sure that the funds are available for equipment or anything that is needed in those areas. And we've gone back and looked at those budgets very closely. Uh, goal one is always student learning, and that those tie together with uh, our enrollment growth and appropriate pr programs. Uh, and of course, we're using our ERP. The ERP funding is coming, not coming out of the MR, the MNO budget. However, a lot of the resources, personnel, activities that goes in to support that that huge project for the college does. And then our maintenance, maintenance and operations budget is always uh, this is always a key goal initiative. I always like to put up the three-legged school just for everybody to remember our sources of funding. Uh, every now and then somebody will say something, well, can't you get money from some other place? Said, no, we have three very strong sources, uh, our state appropriations, tuition and fees, and fundamentally our property taxes. And so we're very appreciative of those. So the legs look a little too level compared to what the actual sources <laughs> That's are. That's true. <laughs> I need to cut, cut a few off at the leg yeah. there. Tilt that top some. Lenore, yes, can you please remind us of the percentages that we give to the state tuition and taxes? I will be glad to. I don't have that off my head at the moment, but I do have it uh, in the statistical profile. And uh, someone will start looking that number up for me. Thank you. And I'll, I'll bring that back in just a little bit. Okay, our next slide is to look at state revenue. And this slide has not changed from the June uh, presentation or from last year actually uh, very slightly when you only look at benefits is there an increase uh, coming this year of three hundred nineteen thousand dollars thank you okay now I have the right answer for you uh, Mrs. Strada 
Um, oops. By source, uh, our revenues, 22% of our revenues come from the state. 24.8% comes from tuition and fees. 24.8. 24.8. Property taxes, 52.6%. And miscellaneous is 0 0.7. Property taxes again, how much? 52.6. 52. 52.6. <coughs> and this is as of our um, <coughs> budget document. 2016-17 so those numbers have shifted slightly but they're very re very representative of where we are thank you thank you thank you, thank you okay uh, on this slide with state revenue due to our enroll uh, increased enrollment in 2016 base year uh, we did receive additional funding from the state because of the increased enrollment that happened during that biennium and so we're, we're doing everything we can for this biennium to do the same thing uh, but fundamentally there's a one percent change in revenue from the state this next slide is showing uh, two different things all the way through the blue <laughs> lines are showing what we have as far as tuition and fee revenues and where we project if wanted to show that if we do have a two percent increase in credit enrollment and this does not show an increase really for the next year in continuing education and, and credit and corporate services however but i highly expect one just in the last few month really we've had a great increase in our cna certified nurse we're now in 17 school districts and you'll see where some expenses are coming out for that. So I do expect uh, continuing education and credit to go up, and we're thinking that credit will too. So, but those dollars are not represented in this budget because this is relatively a conservative budget. We wanted to make sure we were conservative uh, after what happened with Hurricane Harvey last year, and we're still feeling the impact in some of our communities, okay? This is showing a change uh, in our property tax revenue with a 4.4% growth in valuation. And this slide is slightly different from the presentation in June. You will see that in for 2019 budget, then we're projecting $54.7 million roughly in property tax revenue. And this slide gets more detailed. We just went through, um, let's see if my pointer will help. The state appropriations we assume to be the same with a 0% change uh, overall, effectively, really. With our state employee benefits, health insurance uh, revenue going up slightly, 191000 And our uh, contribution for retirement funds going up $127,000. Based upon the 4.4% growth in valuation for your property within our taxing district, plus the slight increase in tax rate, then we would experience a $3.197 million increase in revenue. <coughs> the next line I want to take a second to explain, because last year, we, at this time, and really up until a few days before August the 26th, we were projecting a 5% increase in enrollment, and we had added those dollars into the budget. And then after Hurricane Harvey hit our surrounding communities and uh, we, our enrollment then at that time forward was flat. So the budget for 2017-18 actually included that increased enrollment projection. So taking it back to where we think we're continuing at a, at a, a very conservative rate, then our increase, we actually have a decrease in revenue from that budget, from that budget to budget of $996,000. Now that's one of the reasons we're being very conservative with this uh, is because of the delta there of the change. So that right there. Now, however, I did want to show for 1% growth in enrollment, we would make up $200,000. Okay. 
Our miscellaneous uh, investments and everything would issue would come up to about over three hundred six thousand dollars, and we also have a revenue bond transfer out. And the good news is those dollars can go down a little bit every year, because that's we are transferring less out. Uh, Sixty-four thousand dollars there, and so our total projected revenue change. This would be change would be two million eight hundred ninety thousand eight hundred eighty-six thousand dollars for roughly a three percent change in uh, proposed revenues overall. That's taking into consideration in big picture all effect. Okay. When we go back and look at our strategic goal for professional initiatives. Uh, compensation for all employees is very important in maintaining uh, people. I've also, just in this last few days, received additional information on what the uh, other community colleges are doing across the state, and the chief financial officers across the state are reporting that over 68 percent of the community colleges within the state are providing a 2 percent or greater increase in pay. 2% greater or, or greater increase in pay. And that's just being reported by our chief financial officers as they prepare their budgets. Okay. So with that type of information as it relates to this goal, you're going to see a revised proposal here. So what are we providing? If they're providing 2%, what are we providing? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> that's my next slide. Okay. Um, this has changed from the June presentation. And what, we've, what we're uh, recommending here is that we increase the base for faculty by $1,000. Y'all remember in the past, uh, it has been a major uh, goal for the college to increase base. Now, right now, base for um, full-time faculty with a bachelor's degree is $47,750. So that would take that to $48,750 base. And that would apply to your full-time faculty and terms because they come in at base. Our master's degree people already come in at $50,188 but their base would also increase by $1,000. So within this budget, we're recommending that $1,000 increase to the base. I'm sorry, what's then, the master's degree base again, the new? Their base would go from 50,188 to 51,188. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's an increase. That's key. Yes. Now that's that has nothing to do with their years of service, correct? This is just plain salary. That's the base. Okay. And everything else adds on. Uh, in June, we and I could pull that back up, but in June, we showed the different increments that faculty receive based on experience, uh, education level, those types of things, and I'm going to go through a little bit of that in a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Additional degrees? <coughs> yes, professional, do, do we have another base? No, the base is the same for all degrees. When you start with the same base, However, there's an increment that's added on for education. So if you come and there's an increment that's added on for, for uh, position, if you've been promoted from instructor to associate professor right, right. to professor. But you've got a base for someone with a BA or with a bachelor, somebody with a master's, do you have, is there another base for a higher degree? I'm sorry, there's only one base. The base is universal. I was just showing the as an example. If you come in with a master's, I'm, I'm sorry, I confused it. No, I confused it. I confused it. Yeah. The base is the is universal for all for all levels. For everyone that comes in, starts at the same base. However, if you have a master's, then you receive an incremental addition to the base. We have a, we have four components. And it's not, I'm not sure what the difference between that not being a difference. Well, we have what we call a common base, which all anyone that's a faculty status, they all come in at what we call a common base. Okay, and then right now it's forty-seven seven fifty. We're proposing forty-eight seven fifty, and then once they come in with at the common base, then we build upon that. Do you have 
extra education for master's degree and what type of master's degree do you have a doctorate degree and then there's a separate component which is called our education component and that's added in well, the, the amount that Ms. Keyes quoted for a master's degree, the 50188 currently, that is the base and the education already added together. Okay. Yes. And then it goes on down. Is there another addition now? So it's not a different base. So now I understand the, the For new hires? Right. No, but uh, once you're here, the addition is your rank. Once you've been here, and if you promote, there's a rank component. And then also there's... No, okay, just credentials will give you the yes. Mm -hmm. the credentials will move you from the base to to a master's. Even if you have, let's say, you have a master's degree, and you are, have X amount of hours that you're working toward your doctorate degree, you get paid so much per hour toward that degree that you're credentialed in. So it's not just you have to complete the full degree. If you have hours that have been approved toward a degree that you could be credentialed in, then it's so much per credit hour you get additional pay for that too, yes. So there's there's a fluctuation in between the, the degrees, but the amounts that we quote are once you hit that full degree. Okay. So progress payments. <laughs> progress payments. Yes, yes. Oh, for rank, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that count? And there is not that much difference between CCISD and Delmar, right? Because I've done a little bit of research, and, and their salaries are pretty much like this. Like ours. Are they? Well, our, our benefits are much sure. greater. Uh, our insurance as employees is covered by the state, or the college. We pay our, and so the employees do not pay their insurance for, their, for themselves. And so that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, Part of what we're proposing, are everybody good there? Okay. Part of what we're proposing then as you go down as far as that experience pay is that for every year a faculty member is in, is in, uh, in place, $829 is added and that's in policy. And so this was part of your June presentation. Also in policy, uh, people apply for, rank, for promotions in rank. Those were all uh, approved last spring as people applied and were reviewed, and that's approximately $100,000 across the board to the entire college and allotted increments to individuals. The impact on summer pay, because as, summer, as pay goes up, if people work in the summer, then that's an additional expense, and so we're adding in $92,000, and that's an approximate number, but very solid. And then your benefits will also go up, and that's another $145,000. So for us to make this addition to the salaries would be a total of $874,000 across the board for the faculty uh, positions. Okay. Now then to equate to exempt and other employees, all other employees at the college, with a 2% raise for exempts would be $230,000. For our non-exempt, another two, same 2%, 132,000, with the benefits at 72,000 for a total of $434,000. For the uh, total going to $1,308,600. Now this compares- that, that includes administrators? Pardon? That includes administrators, the vice presidents, the deans, everybody? Yes, sir, your, well, the, uh, your deans, or most of your deans are faculty, uh, your administrators are exempt. Yeah. Okay. So they're different uh, categories. Yeah. But this is all employees. Okay. All employees across the entire campus. All, all employees will be benefited. Yes, sir. Well, this does not include your part time. Yes. So um, you don't consider. Microphone, sir. Speak into the mic. Thought I punched it. There you go. There you are. Okay, so you don't consider deans administrators? Both. Some are both. Yeah, no, some have are, dual sorry, status, yeah. yes. Um, okay. Some are both. Some of the instructional side maintain their faculty status. The majority of them are, are um, what we consider exempt employees. Okay. So yes, they are administrators. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the difference in what you received in uh, the June packet uh, the total was $704,000 increase, and so this 
would include a $604,000 increase into salaries, total salaries, within this budget recommendation. Okay, questions? Can you repeat those figures again? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Repeat the figures again. Okay. And, and are they on here? No, I mean the one million three hundred eight thousand totals all the way down. In the pre in the presentation that was presented in June, and you have a copy of it with the yellow highlight. Okay, um, that was showing seven hundred four thousand. And that for the total. Yes, total to total. Okay. And so the difference we're increasing salaries by six hundred four thousand dollars. From is what we're recommending. Everybody? Okay. This is how it would all come together across the entire campus for our proposed budget and salaries with a change across the board. You'll see the faculty status from budget to budget of $898,000, roughly 3% increase in faculty. Now the reason that number is slightly different than what we were asking for in raises is it has to do with the positions that are different. And this also includes your adjuncts. This total dollars for total types of faculty are all categories of faculty, which is your full-time tenure track, your term, and your adjuncts. So those dollars are all in there. How much do adjuncts get paid? It depends upon what they teach. and. Um, Tammy, you want to give the exact figures? It depends upon their degree and, and to what they're teaching. And if it's a terminal degree. What is a terminal degree? That's the highest level degree within the field. And actually, I will sift through and find that, but it just a bit, it depends. Like if they come in with a uh, master's degree, then it's like twenty six fifty per three credit hours. Mm -hmm. um, if they come in with a doctorate degree, then it, we raised it last year, two years ago. It's over three thousand dollars. So it goes by if you teach one one um, class, it's three credit hours. It's like a stipend. You get paid a flat amount per for th three credit hour class. And, and when did they last get an increase? It's about two years ago. I'll go and look. I did. We did have on the community college the TCCTA. The Texas Community College Teachers Association, on their last survey, which was completed this past November, uh, Del Mar College ranked third out of 50 community colleges in Texas in pay for right. our adjuncts. So we're ranked third out of 50 in adjunct pay. Mm. Okay. Can they teach more than one class if they so choose? Or what we what we do is is to, to to maintain that adjunct or part time status. They can only teach so many credit hours based on um, basically you take the credit hours and times it by two and that's considered a work work schedule so to maintain the part-time set if they have to stay below a certain amount but they could teach up to three classes and maintain a part-time adjunct status what is our three, percentage three i'm sorry oh, go ahead excuse me what is our percentage of tenure track to, to adjunct i've got that Ten, or tenure track or full-time to part-time non-adjunct is that what you're looking for? well I'm not sure. Break it down yeah. Yeah. Two different questions. There's different ways to cut that. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we have tenure, tenure track, and then adjuncts. And then we have assistant instructors. All of those maintain faculty status. Um, tenure are those who have reached that particular time in their uh, profession, and they have, brain, they have gained tenure. They have reached the top rank. Tenure track means you were hired into a regular faculty position, and you're on track to tenure. earn tenure. But not all faculty would necessarily be on a tenure track. The ones that are not on tenure track would be the term. The full-time terms are not on tenure track. And then we have some assistant instructor positions that um, are not on tenure track. Yes. Okay. And we have a, I kind of take a snapshot in time because every day our headcount changes. So as far as a, a snapshot that I had back in June, we had um, 263 active tenure, tenure track. And then we had 240 adjuncts at that particular time that was that had taught in the spring. 
So not quite a 50-50. And 40 oh. terms, though. And we, we had 40 terms. Is that normal, 50-50? It's a little less. There's, there's no. <clears throat> I think what you're, what you may be asking, there's, there's another number out there that I think is, it's the number of percentage of classes taught by full time, and part time, and we're, we're usually on the higher end at about 72, 73 percent, and <clears throat> for full time as compared to part time, and so it depends on again the load of the full time faculty, what, what percentage of, of, of the load that they're actually teaching by semester. <coughs> So that's very different than the 50-50. Where it, the 50-50 comes into place, those are other schools such as Austin Community College and so forth where I think their loads are one-third taught by full-time versus two-thirds part-time. We're, we're at the higher end, um, much like um, Tyler Junior College, uh, Laredo, and, and our other peers. So I think that, I, I, think, I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking. It, it, it helps. Yeah. But, but we, can, we can glean some more questions from that and pull some more analysis for you. And you can certainly uh, send me any more questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll study it some more. Yeah, yeah, let me know. And I'll sit down with you because I, it's the full-time to part-time teaching ratios and percentages that everyone talks about. And those, are the school, and those are the numbers that SACS evaluates us on as well. And okay. that's ultimately probably an even larger, different conversation than about budget because that's about the theory of how you staff sources of staffing how you build a good quality True. workforce. And one component we're looking at today is how we compensate for that. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, continuing on this same slide, uh, your exempt employee uh, increase would be 683,000. I'd like to mention that the instructors in continuing education, full-time instructors, and the full-time instructors in corporate services are all exempt even though they're instructors, so they're not in the faculty status bucket. And that is where we've had significant increase and have had some full-time uh, positions come in in the last few weeks, really. That, that, and those positions come with revenue behind them, okay? So, uh, and then non-exempt is 104,946 with your benefits of almost $400,000 and your total budget increase right over $2 million or a 3% increase the bullets below are fundamentally everything we've just discussed in detail on the previous slide but we sum we summarized why you would see the changes okay. any questions on this this next slide is um, your proposed uh, expenditure budget as it comes together with major categories again we have the same uh, for salaries for faculty exempt and non-exempt but then we show benefits and then your non-salary expenditures, which were increasing uh, from 22.9 million to 23.9 million for right at $966,000. And our contingencies change as your total budget changes. Your overall contingency of 1.5 million over in the left column over 2018-19, that is one and a half percent of your M&O basically. That's a percentage that is another number's change, this number goes up. And so we have a $43,000 change or increase uh, in your contingency budget for this next year. We've continued to have a, a, a line item, however, we've decreased it uh, as a contingency for appeals. And we make sure that those funds are available. And we've, uh, so that's being budgeted at $400,000. And so we're showing a total overall budget increase of 3%. We will also be dealing at the end of the year with our GASB contingencies or GASB, which are basically reserved for book entries. And those have to do with uh, pensions and then our health insurance requirements that are uh, book entries from our reserves to our liabilities. And we'll be coming to you next fall with a policy revision uh, change, possible change as to how we account for maintaining sufficient cash on hand or whether or not we, we, we will now be trying to, we will now be calculating and booking our three months cash reserves based <coughs> upon available cash, cash positioning. But that will be something we'll discuss in next year's, next fall in more detail. This is more of a line item uh, listing. 
of a breakout of the uh, non-salary expenditures, and we can show the increase and decrease in areas. Uh, the contract instruction is a large decrease, and that has basically to do with the revision in the continuing education law that we were, Dr. Escamilla and others were very effective in working on this last year, and we've been able to adjust and more accurately budget as to what those dollars will be, and that's a payout, not coming in, so this is, this is to our benefit, actually. Uh, you'll see where facilities and maintenance and repairs were budgeting 19% more. And in equipment, uh, of the um, approximate million dollars increase in uh, tax revenue from the tax rate increase, this is where uh, a big percentage <coughs> of that money is going into instructional and equipment that's needed across campus. So between salaries and equipment, that is where we're asking for the funds to be basically allocated. In any particular area that that equipment is going to? Well, and particularly in the health science areas, uh, there's great need to replace. We realize when we built the buildings over on West Campus, most <coughs> of the equipment was built at, was purchased at that time. <coughs> and so you're being hit with quite a bit of uh, instructional equipment that is, needs to be phased out and replaced. And then there's issues across campus and various programs. And so we've looked at this very highly. And, um, Right. So this, this and it's a key field for us for providing the workforce needs. If yes, it talks is. About health. <coughs> yes, it is. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, advertising is down, and I know we want to grow. Yes. <laughs> as we go into a in, in year, is that going to uh, hurt us to be able to, you know, to cut back 100 and 12 percent of the budget? That's yeah. Well, I mean, one could say yes at this point, but uh, we we've we've got ways of distributing um, those dollars, and we think we can still be effective. I mean, with today's social media, sometimes it's more effective and cheaper to do things than it was in traditional advertising. And we're, we're, truthfully, you look at the advertising that's available in traditional means, it's how effective is it these days. So. Exactly. And, and we have data. We're, we're watching that very closely, and, and we don't like um, cutting. Uh, I've been one that, that has been advocating more on the advertising side. We're just going to have to do things differently, monitor it, and... Uh, We'll watch it from year to year and see what the outcomes ultimately are. Claudia and I have sat and we've talked about where and we can see very clearly where we've cut back um, with the way of distrib distribution and so forth. But uh, as you're saying, if we can get smarter and do things uh, more with our social media and the like, um, we're just going to try it this year. And um, because there are other areas that, we're, that, that are taking cuts as well. And, um, you know, in this post Harvey scenario, we think it's going to take a year or two to, to, to really ultimately dig out and that's ultimately what we're faced with right now otherwise we'd be back at the we would have been whole you know coming back um, and it's, we still got a ways to go it's sort of odd I mean you could you could almost beef advertising up in every other year temporarily because you're trying to <coughs> promote for the biennium yeah, sure. year but it's unfortunately the same year's election where you have hundred and seventy thousand dollars expense so if those were just happened to be in off cycles, we'd be better off in terms of the budget because one could offset the other. But we've always been ones that we've always been the college that ramps up during the base year, which we're in right now as well. So it feels really, really, um, it's not comfortable um, for sure. But uh, we're going to do the best we can. The maintenance and repair, I see an increase there. Yes. But my concern is it's not enough. Uh, and and I've heard things like we've got one painter, we've got one half part time carpenter. And then August was giving us uh, some scenarios on, on the envelopes of buildings that had problems. And you, you hadn't completed that. Uh, yeah, uh, those were mentioned as to be addressed by the 2014 bond. Are, are those all covered? Well, do we know if they're all covered by the bond? Uh, yeah, uh, we're undergoing the programming for the rest of the bond. So building envelope is specifically budgeted for the bond, okay. and we're, we're, we're trying to cover as much. There were several bu buildings that was identified as needing comprehensive roof replacement. We're finding out that not all of them need roof replacement, so we're, we're looking at it as a totality as an envelope, not just roofing. Yeah. So there is some budget for uh, okay. addressing. And, some and, and I've read that, that universally deferred, by deferred maintenance is a big problem. Yes. Not, not just here, everywhere. We, we were just talking about that. Mr. Garcia and I were just talking about that. He was bringing the, the same issues um, that, that affected him. And so a, a comprehensive um, deferred maintenance program 
is something we're, we're, we're working toward, and we were just talking about how we put something together and triangulate between the, fiscal, the finance office and the facilities to, uh, to roll that out on a, on a, on a, in a program that we can bring to you and show and forecast and prepare. But getting back to what the, the, the first part of your uh, statements, Mr. Uh, Bennett, um, the foundation <coughs> issues that exist at the White Library as well as the um, um, administration office, the Heldenfels office, have to be fixed. They, those have to be addressed before we can do anything um, to to restore them. It would make some, no sense for us to go and restore these buildings without <laughs> fixing a building if, that has a foundation that could be permeated. So we're going to we're we're working again to use uh, August's term that the totality of the program, and we're going to be coming back to you very soon um, on a, on how we're going to address uh, fixing those flooding issues and potential flooding issues on those foundations. Okay. I'm glad to see it go up. I'm just afraid it hasn't increased enough. That's my concern. Duly noted. We're 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 still we still have some some wiggle room and and, and we're going to be duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would like to point out on election. Yes, we have it in, and for some reason it didn't populate 100% increase. But uh, <laughs> but. Um, this is election year, so we do have to budget our portion of the election expense. Is that an approximation? Uh, normally, like 125, 150. I've never seen it that high. It, it's, that, it's, it's it's always 130 it's, something, 100, 100 and a half, somewhere around there. It, yes, it's, we were told it's going up, and so we feel like it's a pretty solid they number. Haven't given you a number. No, but no, so but it's a we, it's a proportion it's of the expense, and yeah. we ex ex we uh, project this to be our cost. Yeah. Uh, security is we're keeping security flat here in a minute you, on the next page you'll see where we have uh, the next uh, for the new police department uh, recruitment has gone down slightly and food and beverage gone up uh, the, the big change in consultants and contract labor remind us I think you've told us that before but just as a reminder that was a decrease of 200,000 that really, a lot of that has to do with August managing IT so well as far as on the, some of the contractors and the consultants, because that's the biggest bucket in there, in that classification. August, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> what Lenora was referring to is in the past, there were specific line items, several line items for, uh, in the facilities budget, uh, as an example, for coordinating architect. So that was internally budgeted uh, as well. So those are no longer needed. Uh, we are getting the support from AGCM and they're funded by the mob. But that's ex uh, specifically in detail what I've in decreased the last few and years. And with IT though, you do have some open positions I think in IT. We've heard that before. You're, you're, you've, you've so that's, but that's covered in the salary and not salary. on the line. Exactly. Actively not recruiting. You know, so there may be a little speak. shipping of dollars here. Okay, got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you'll see where the library expense has gone up slightly. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I think insurance is the largest bucket really to go up here plus police uh, force but uh, we've already been receiving increased premium notifications for next year uh, sure largely part of the losses that have been experienced in our region and then our campus police was budgeted and we've increased that budget an additional 233,000 so the net difference for your non salary expenditures is right under a million dollars of nine hundred sixty six thousand eight hundred fifty four dollars with a four percent increase okay. now then we'll move on to tax rates and how this builds <coughs> what we're proposing here is a proposed budget of revenue from taxation at fifty four million six hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred eight dollars that is an increase from fifty three million six hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred eight dollars that we, we that you were shown in June okay. this also reflects the increase in the proposed tax rate for point two oh nine six nine three per 100 and it was point two oh five so it's going up approximately point Zero zero four. Uh, the actual the effective rate is an, is an actual rate uh, in the presentation that was uh, uploaded on Thursday. We still had that as an approximate number. 
However, this has <coughs> been uh, verified now and is a solid number of 1.198909. The proposed rate that we are showing here of 0 0.209 is 5.42% over the effective rate. And I'd like to say again, the effective rate is the rate at which you would take the same amount of dollars earned in the previous year as to what you would get this year. So the effective rate then uh, is 5.42%. This rate that we're proposing is 5.42% over the effective rate. Now in the June presentation, we had the higher rate too because it was uh, 0.205700. Okay. What is the rollback? The rollback is 8%. And what is that on? The effective rate? The, the rollback is compared to the effective rate and only on M&O. Effective rate this year compared to the effective rate last year? It's the effective rate this year. Can't be more than 8%? Yes, over last year. So. Okay. Yeah. Over the dollar. So we're, we're As calculated. Better. And there's a move in the legislation, and legislator, there's a move to change that, isn't it? Well, there was a, a strong movement last year. It did not happen, mm -hmm. but there it is a, it's coming a, here. It's coming a strong it's, discussion. It is definitely one of the key items that we're watching. That's, we, we feel like this is um, a very appropriate recommendation. Okay. <coughs> so going on to our debt service budget. Our debt obligation this year goes up. Uh, it, it will be $18,565,219. I'd like to no mention that as those dollars are collected, those dollars are maintained separately for this payment of our debt service. The debt service rate has gone up, and you see on the bottom here of the slide the progression as it goes up, and this is going up 0.187. Two nine, so less than two cents. However, it now then would be 0 0.072192. So you'll see the change from 2015-16 as we move through. Now this includes the new bonds that were issued? Yes, sir. And what interest rate were they issued at? Approximately 3.8 as of last week. Is this in line with what we promised the voters at the time of the election? Yes, sir. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Still well within the total amount. Of course, there is more uh, construction in front of us, but we have done, e even years of advance of selling uh, bonds, we have done everything we can to hold rates and so forth. Those are things we've done in years past that we don't even get to, that don't, that you don't know that are, that are in these uh, overall M&O rates, that we have con to try to do, do everything we can to control those costs and not increase um, debt service uh, unnecessarily and so forth. And so, um, but there's still some ways to go to complete the bond program. Okay, this slide is looking at the combined tax rate. Your m &O rate is the same as in the previous slide and your debt service is the same as the previous slide for a combined rate of 0.281885 per 100. And this is compared, you can see down uh, below as the change goes from the previous years. <coughs> Lenore, yes, sir. On, on that one, if um, that increase between from 1718 to 2018 19 has the, the difference has two major components to it. Yes. One is the voter approved uh, bond increase that wasn't in it last year. That's right. And the second thing is, of course, uh, new taxes. Can we break that down? Uh, can you tell us what makes it up? Because right, it's showing a, you know, roughly a. 2.2 cents if I did the math on my head right. Ed's probably better at that than I am. It's yeah, 2.27 actually, yes. So of that 2.27%, uh, if we went back, I guess you'd have to look at the the prior slide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say that um, that's... Your biggest portion is on the debt service. Right. It's at 1.89 roughly, 1.87. 0.187, so uh, of that 2.27, 1.87, think of it that way, 
is on debt service. So point four then is related is tax. So I think that's important because people look at that at this little graph and they go, well, you're increasing it a whole lot. No, the voters increased it right. by their vote, 1.87, and because of taxing this year, it's 0.4. That's correct. Of a cent. Less than four cents. Point four point, of a cent. Point four of a cent. Of a cent. Point four of a cent. Less than, less than half a cent. And uh, I'd like to also note that um, the average price of a residence in our taxing district is $161,550. And based upon that, this increase, combined increase, would be $36.71 a year. Say those numbers again, 167? $161,550. If they're not. Average value of a residence in our taxing district. If they're not frozen. That's correct. Yes, sir. If they're if not they're under not exemptions frozen. or something else. Excluding all the other exemptions. And so the tax impact was 16, say that again? The $36.71. A year. A year. And again, that okay. only applies to those who don't already have the exemptions for a variety of reasons. I would like to mention that the original proposal, the increase keeping the exact same tax rate, would have been $30.17. So it's about uh, over $5.65, $5 <coughs> plus change in uh, the proposed tax rate increase. I don't have a question, but I have a, a comment. I wanted to uh, thank you. I know that in our June workshop when we discussed this, I was concerned about not having an increase in our base, in our common base. And so I appreciate the, the calculations and the sharpening of the pencil and obviously having valuations come in, but also hoping that the board takes the bold step to fund those, those increases with a tax rate um, increase. So, so I think it's important to keep our quality faculty to be able to, to continue to retain and recruit uh, faculty. So I, I really appreciate that, the opportunity um, that we're going to have to do that for our faculty. And then I know Mr. Bennett was concerned about the equipment. That That's a, I think I've calculated a $380,000 swing from what you presented to us in, in um, June versus what you showed us today. And I think that is important to keep that equipment up to date. You know, having fabulous faculty who are working on 15-year-old or, you know, 10-year-old, 20-year-old <laughs> um, equipment is difficult for them to, to turn out the kind of graduates in, in the programs that we need. So, so I appreciate you, you hearing those concerns that several of us expressed in that workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Keyes. Well heard. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. And I also want to say thank you for the health services increase and increasing their equipment as well because every place – that my husband and I go to wherever, where'd you go to school? And it's always, you know, who's sticking that in here? And uh, and they always are so complimentary of Del Mar and will say, well, I had a little bump in the road or whatever, but my teachers helped me and I, you know, here I am, I've got a job and doing great. Thank you very much. And, and they're very, they come right out and say, Del Mar saved my life. Wonderful. That's what we want to hear. So thank you all. Yes, everybody. Mr. Bennett, do you look like you? No, sorry. <laughs> I read the number before. From last month to this month, this is wonderful. It really speaks to the sudden changes that we that we experience at the end of July every year, and I want to thank staff for shifting. Uh, quickly on the fly to go from one version to the next because the numbers and you know, we had to post on Thursday to meet our legal obligations and so forth and the numbers come in and we're still calculating and we say you know let's meet our legal legal obligations and then let's let's update we appreciate you all's flexibility at this point and to shift uh, to be with us to pivot <clears throat> suddenly uh, that's how we get there and and we have stronger and better iterations as we go ahead going in and this isn't even August yet and that's the great news. And we have such a fine point on our pencils and have applied those fine points to the paper um, at a, such a great opportunity at a, such a great time. And that's just um, hats off to the team uh, for all their diligence and, and, and hard work. The, I'd like to 
touch a little bit more, if I may, on the continuing education, the scenario with continuing education. I just want to kind of set up this narrative because I hope it's something that we continue to talk about and really uh, maximize as part of our curriculum. This is the first base year, the first full base year funding year that we are able to apply that new law, HB, what was it, 2994, Claudia, um, that, that, that allows uh, continuing education to open up to those students after the sophomore year. And that's just speaking to the high school uh, portion of all of this. That's not including all of our other partnerships and programs out there. We have training contracts now with some friends that are, can we talk about that at all, or are we? We're gonna we're, have a big press release. And blow okay, so we're, we, so, we, so, so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't wanna blow it. So we have, so, but, but with that being said, all of these things are transpiring as we're doing, as we're putting these budgets together, and we have um, numbers that are gonna come in that are not um, parallel, shall I say, to the credit side of the house. And that's just happening, it follows the economy. The non-credit side follows the economy, so I'm going to use that as kind of a, a kind of a teaser for for future conversations as as, as we complete these budgets and, and certain uh, press releases happening. So there's some there are things happening. Um, you all, as a, as a board, this board has supported uh, the college in growing that component of the curriculum into a. I, I remember the day I, I challenged Lenora to say, build a division of continuing education, not a component of the college, not a branch, not a program a, a full division and those numbers as mr. Garcia and I were were studying this morning uh, have grown dramatically and they've they've corrected but I think they're gonna jump back up again because the economy is getting very very hot and continuing education will follow the economy remember non-credit follows the economy credit counters the economy are there, Good are there other questions for Lenora staff or Dr. Skimmy about the budget presentation? I, I just review. want to be clear on one thing. On the, on the faculty, when you talk about a $1,000 increase to the base, is that part of the 2%? It's not a $1,000 increase and then plus 2%, is it? No, sir. That it's $1,000 to the base. To the base. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I would like to especially, I know Dr. Escamilla alluded to it, but Dr. West and, and John Johnson jumped through hoops this morning making finalizing our revisions and so thank you very much okay there's no other questions in uh, we will go into the section agenda that's on public comments uh, which is posted on the agenda and the uh, rules around that is anyone signed in thank you Claudia Okay, uh, Jim Klein, who signed in. Members of the board, my name is Jim Klein. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm a professor of history here at Del Mar College. Um, and uh, the discussion I heard just a few minutes ago about the budget um, interested me, uh, but I did not hear any talk about um, regarding the maintenance and upkeep of the campus, uh, the contract given for custodial services. And I've uh, determined or learned some new information just recently. Um, I've learned some new information, I'm sorry, uh, recently regarding this uh, to determine that, that the custodial staff are paid $7.25 an hour um, to do the work in the campus buildings here at Del Mar College. Uh, which is, of course, uh, statewide national minimum wage. Uh, I've also determined that uh, CCISD pays its custodial staff $13.25 an hour to do the exact same work. Uh, and that has led to several uh, staff members leaving uh, from Del Mar College or from GCA. Uh, ABM, I guess, is the new company name, uh, and going over to CCISD. Uh, and so I would ask you that you take that into consideration when determining whether to renew the contract for GCA. I really think that wage should be higher than 725, whether it's 1325 or not, that's perhaps deba debatable. But 725 is quite low. Uh, and the fact that they're concerned about this, I think because this leads to a high degree of turnover. Uh, and it reduces the amount of trust that we have in the custodial staff because the custodial staff person happens to be different every few months uh, because they tend to kind of come and go so quickly. So I ask you to keep that in your mind. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wardy. Thank you. 
Yes, my name is Jack Gordy, and I live at 4118 Bray Drive. The reason I'm here, I don't know who put that on the agenda about the pay raise for the administrators, but ever who did proves they don't care, okay? And everybody that votes for it is going to prove that you don't care about the workers, you don't care about the instructors. They deserve the same pay raise that the administrators are getting. And if you don't give them that pay raise, then you don't need to be in office up here because you're proving you don't care. They deserve the same thing that everybody else is getting. And that's common sense. And I hope all of you got a little, just a little bit of common sense and not approve the pay raise for the administrator. It's wrong. And if you do things that's wrong, we'll all remember it. Thank you, Mr. Gordy. Anyone else who would like to address the uh, board? Okay. Uh, we are going to do a closed session today, so if you'd remain in your seats, uh, audience, while I read the closed session language, and then we will uh, clear the room and go into closed session. Uh, closed session today will be per Texas Government Code 551.074A1, personal matters regarding the appointment, employment, reevaluation, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer employee, including annual evaluation of the college president and president's contract with possible discussion and action open session, and Texas Government Code 551.071, consultation with legal counsel regarding pending or contemplated litigation or settlement offer with possible discussion and action open session, and the seeking of legal advice from counsel on pending legal or contemplated matters or claims with possible discussion open session. Uh, it is 107, and we will clear the room and go into closed session. And Regents will take about a five minute break while we clear the room. Okay, it is uh, 1.49 p.m. and we're coming back into open session. Uh, at this point, we're gonna go to the next agenda item, which is calendaring. Uh, I just want to review quickly the rest of the meetings for August since this is the month regents uh, in public that we have uh, a number of extra meetings related to the uh, annual budgetary and tax process. There is a meeting on uh, a special call meeting next Monday the 6th at noon. It'll be fairly short. Lenore, I'm going to look at you to make sure I'm saying this right. That is because of the timing this year and the way the calendar fell. We did not have the information we needed in time for today to set the order of to tax. So it's going to be a short meeting. We just don't have all the details together. We'll have that annual official resolution order of, of, uh, of the related to the tax and we'll approve that and it's a, it's a one agenda item. We're not anticipating anything else at this point. We will have lunch provided. We'll have lunch. Yeah. Um, then uh, nothing else related to Del Mar that week. The week of the 13th uh, is our regular board meeting on Tuesday the 14th. I don't believe, uh, Dr. Scamilla, we're anticipating a workshop at this time, or do we know yet? Well, we have, we do have 10 o'clock. Okay. And we're gonna, we're gonna solidify that in the next day or two, but by the end of this week um, for that meeting. Okay. But do prepare, be prepared. To so hold it from 10 on, on, 10 on that. Yes. And then the following week, the week of the 20th, the third full week in, um, of August, we have on Monday night, the 20th, we have our, at 5.30, the budget and tax rate public hearing, followed by on Thursday, the 23rd, the Del Mar uh, tax hearing at 5.30. Uh, generally hold about a couple of hours. It may not take that long, but those are those meetings that week. And then on the 27th, <coughs> um, at, uh, actually, the week of the 27th, and specifically on Tuesday, the 28th, We'll have the Del Mar, uh, at noon, the Del Mar budget tax rate approval meeting. And that's a noon to 1, 1 ish sort of meeting. Uh, does anyone aware, I know we have a, it's critical we have a, a quorum for all those meetings. Uh, I know, Carol, you're going to miss sixth. the 6th, the next on Monday. And you're out on the 6th. Well, we should have a quorum because I think everyone else could be here Monday. Uh, should have a quorum, I think, on the regular meeting on the 14th. What about the meetings on the 20? 20th and the 23rd the evening meetings. Is anyone anticipating missing those at this point? So we have a quorum for those. And then of course it's critical on the meeting at noon on the 28th, the Tuesday to, ha to have a quorum for that day. That's okay with everyone? Great. I changed mine, so I will be 
Okay, great. Thank you for that. Any other calendaring items at this point? Co convocation on the 20th. Okay. That's that Monday. And graduation is on Friday the 17th? 17th at 6.30. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Would you mind if I just ask if any of the regents do not expect to be at graduation? Carol? Okay. Everybody else? Thank you. Should be. Okay, great. If there's no other calendaring items, we are adjourned at 1.52 p.m. Thank you.